Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha Conquer Outdoors. Earlier this year, Arctic Cat Incorporated sold to the giant Textron Corporation. This news resonated throughout the power sports industry and has serious implications. To get answers to the questions you've been asking, we went right to the top and talked to Textron VP, John Collins. We asked John specifically about his history with Textron. I started really directly out of college and uh, I had graduated college and I'm from Augusta. So coming to work for Textron, uh, EasyGo was the company at the time was in Augusta, Georgia, so it was coming home to work for the hometown company. Started as a quality engineer, and so they moved me into, into different roles. Uh, ultimately, I ran supply chain for Textron Specialized Vehicles, and then uh, about five years ago, I went into P&L management, where I ran our parts, garments, and accessories business. And then for the last three years now, I've run the consumer business for Textron Specialized Vehicles. So our consumer business is any vehicles that people would park in their garage. You may or may not have known that Textron acquired bad boy buggies back in 2010. We asked John what the implications would be for the bad boy lineup after acquiring Arctic Cat off-road vehicles. So we got into the off-road business with the acquisition of what was at the time bad boy buggies. We acquired them in 2010. And with that began this journey into power sports and more of the off-road type product line. Bad Boy is a fantastic product. It was an all-electric four-wheel drive vehicle. Um, no one in the world produces more electric vehicles than EasyGo. So it was technology and, and product that we knew how to produce. Uh, and we could substantially improve the quality of the product uh, after the acquisition, which we did. The brand that we're going to lead with for our dirt offering is Textron Off-Road. So uh, a decision we've made is to phase out Bad Boy. So we don't have any products produced today with the Bad Boy name. Bad Boy was a fantastic product for us, but as we have thought about how we want to be positioned in this space, uh, really we think of Textron. And if you think of Textron, people should think of a $14 billion corporation. And a $14 billion corporation that brings you things like the world's fastest private aircraft, the Citation 10 the V-22, which when you close your eyes and you think of the commercial that markets for the Marines, the few, the proud of the Marines, the image of the helicopter sitting on the beach that takes off like a, a helicopter but flies like an airplane. It's a V-22, that's a Textron product. The company that can bring you products like the Citation 10, the V-22, can bring the world the world's best side-by-side -side dirt products. So with that, we have positioned all of our dirt product line, including uh, what was acquired from Arctic Cat, uh, under that Textron off-road brand. Just to get this picture in focus, we asked John to tell us what the Textron off-road lineup will look like. Our lineup for dirt products is Textron off-road, but then our Go Fast product is the Wildcat, which people have always known and is a, a cachet brand, an equity brand. And that Go Fast market will continue to use the Prowler product line, Stampede, will be our utility side-by-side -side line. Altera, which was a fantastic Arctic Cat brand, will be our ATVs. And then we are working on new products, which will be introduced to that Textron Off-Road slash Arctic Cat channel. Many of our Dirt Tracks viewers may not realize just how strong the Arctic Cat brand is in the snowmobile industry. John gave us the straight goods on just how important the Arctic Cat brand is, both dirt and snow, to Textron. We, we love the Arctic Cat brand. And so it seems very odd that Textron would come in and they would acquire Arctic Cat. And one of the first decisions we make, we would make is to not use Arctic Cat on the dirt product line. And I know a lot of people read into that, that um, Textron is interested in not using the Arctic Cat brand. That couldn't be any further from the truth. But the reality is that we want our dirt product line to be a product line that wins across North America, really across Across the world and we're just as interested in selling dirt products to the guy in Amarillo, Texas as we are to selling to the guy in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And so for us, we really needed a brand that was less regional than Arctic Cat. I mean, at the end of the day, Arctic Cat is cold weather cat and that doesn't necessarily resonate with the guy in Amarillo, Texas, Augusta, Georgia, Tampa, Florida. It certainly resonates with the guy in Green Bay, Wisconsin or Duluth or Minneapolis, Minnesota. 
we made the decision that Arctic Cat had high equity sub brands like Wildcat, like Prowler, like Altera, but that the parent brand needed to be Textron Off-Road and that we needed to tell the story of the company that brings you the V22, the company that brings you the Citation 10, the company that brings you the ship to shore connector, the company that there's, there's no company that better supports America's warfighter than Textron. And we believe that's the guy who buys side-by-sides. The guy who cares about that kind of thing is the guy who buys side-by-sides. We feel like there's a story to be told here and a story we believe that there's nobody better positioned to go really win in the side-by-side -side space, to make the investments required to be a real player and not to be geographically tied in any way. Arctic Cat will always be our snow brand. We love the Arctic Cat brand. And just like Easy Go will always be our PTV brand. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. The acquisition of Arctic Cat was a $250 million investment for Textron. Just exactly what does Textron expect from this investment? We think about this off-road space categorized by product usage. So that, that go fast recreation space, we want to participate there. And we are, we do today with Wildcat. And I think the industry knows we're working on a even better Wildcat, which we're prepared to launch early next year. We want to participate in that utility space, and we can do that. We are with the Stampede. The Stampede is, you know, the reality is under that bad boy brand, not enough people knew about the Stampede. But the Stampede, 80 horsepower, class-leading storage, fantastic suspension. It's a product that can really go compete against the Polaris Ranger or the Can-Am Defender. Uh, so we're prepared to go compete in that space. Under the gas more pure utility space, we have the Prowler. We'll continue to have the, the world's best electric side-by-side. -side. We always have under the Bad Boy brand. So whether it's go fast to utility ATV, we, we, we will be a player in every category. We asked John if he could give both dealers and consumers confidence that what Textron is doing will ultimately be good for the Arctic Cat brand. There's a lot of people out there, dealers included, you cut them, they're gonna bleed green. They love that Arctic Cat brand. And for that reason, that was a big part of what we wanted in the acquisition was that diehard loyalist who loved the Arctic Cat brand. The decision we made is the right thing to do to grow the dirt business was to rebrand the parent name of the dirt product. And again, it was to make it a less regional play. One of the things we were prepared to do is make major investments in branding Arctic Cat on the snow side, branding Textron Off-Road on the dirt side, and continuing to invest in those sub-brands. But there should never be any confusion. Arctic Cat is our brand for snow. And the right thing to do to make Arctic Cat grow across North America and across the globe was to position it with a brand that was not alienating at all. Textron has been on a roll the past year. The company is doing impressive things, rapid fire. We asked John where he sees Textron off-road in the next few months and in the next couple of years. So today, if you look at market share that Textron off-road has, let's combine Arctic Cat Dirt with Textron off-road dirt. We're, uh, we're less than a double digit player. And we all know there's one big gorilla out there that has the vast majority of the market share. Our intention is to change that. We are a serious player on the sports side, but we all know that this is a market that has shifted to more and more horsepower and more and more wheel travel. And we will have a product that will compete there and compete very, very well. We will be competing in that space that sits between work and play. And we have a fantastic product that will be launched in within the year, maybe much sooner than that, that will sit in that work and play space and give products like the Players General a run for its money. We have the Stampede, which I believe is the best utility vehicle in the industry. And so that Stampede has, uh, especially since the Arctic Cat acquisition, has done remarkably well in the marketplace. And our intention is to go get our unfair share of the market. In the meantime, bring consumers fantastic products that are reliable, that they can trust to do what they're supposed to do every day, that are incredibly fun to operate and to drive, that have the level of passion 
in them that a former Arctic cat guy would expect. So, I mean, that's, that's who we are. You know, I think people think of Textron, they think of, you know, this big corporate company of faceless people. That's not the reality. The reality is that we are a company full of people who are passionate about our products and passionate about this industry. We don't play for second place. We are gonna bring the best products to the industry. We're gonna give our dealers fantastic products to sell. And I would expect in the not too distant future for people not to be asking questions, why did you, why did you leave with Textron? I think that this is a question that takes care of itself in the coming months and years. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired performance. One of the most enticing aspects of Yamaha's new Wolverine X4 is its dual personality. On the recreational side, you've got aggressive looks, a sporty personality, and the ability to carry four people. But on the utility end, you've got a convertible cargo bed and what we think is the coolest and most functional feature, self-leveling rear shocks. Yamaha's Travis Hollins sheds a little bit more light for us on how these shocks make the vehicle more functional for both types of users. Self-leveling shocks really are something that, uh, that came about because of customers. Uh, we know this customer is a family-oriented customer. We know they love comfort. They want to get out into the, the real outdoors. They want to have a real adventure and go through some really aggressive terrain. What they don't want to do is get out every time somebody gets in or out of the vehicle and readjust their suspension, or if they're carrying, uh, you know, their hunting equipment and then they're not carrying it, uh, you know, all of that affects the ride, all of that affects the off-road capability. So during development, depending on what that situation was, uh, we might have lost some ground clearance, we might have lost some off-road capability uh, utilizing the standard suspension. So we knew we had to do something different. One person in it, you've got a set ride height, um, you know, you've got this great comfortable ride. Now you put four people in it with a bunch of cargo and now all of a sudden the, the weight of that machine dramatically changes and you lose a lot of ground clearance. So after driving just a short period of time, those shocks will pump themselves back up. They'll maintain the ground clearance, the ride height and the overall comfort. And the customer doesn't have to do anything. It's all self-contained within the shocks themselves. Yamaha isn't the first to use a self-leveling shock on a side-by-side but they are the first to use this type of shock on a vehicle that's labeled a sport utility. And we think it's in this category that these shocks are the most useful, especially when loading up your Wolverine X4 with a bunch of Yamaha accessories like the all new full cab enclosure. When we developed the X4, accessories were a huge portion of the overall development of it. We've spent as much time working on the accessories as we have the actual unit itself. Uh, one of the key accessories is our full cab enclosure. So you'll notice the, the back hatch, if you will, uh, is a fully sealed, completely covers the cargo bed, uh, completely seals it off. It's fully lockable, so you can lock all the, the components, including the tailgate. Uh, it actually swings up like a, a camper shell style. So, you know, if you're working in the back of that cargo bed and it's raining or snowing, you know, it's gonna actually protect you from those elements and uh, make your, your trail ride as enjoyable and comfortable as you can. Beyond the cab, Yamaha is offering a long list of accessories, all available right away, that can transform the X4 into a specialized vehicle for almost any purpose. Our focus was being able to allow the customer to do what they want with it, um, whether that's working with it, whether that's hunting with it, or uh, an all-season vehicle. You know, we've got the, the winch that goes on the front. We've got a full audio system with multiple speakers inside for uh, those more recreational focused people. And then all, all the other accessories, the light bars, you'll see the, uh, the 27 inch tires that they're offering as well uh, for those customers, depending if you're a mud rider or a, more of a hard packed rider, uh, there's a tire application for them. So we're really looking at, you know, the base model and then being able to allow customers to use it in any application that they, they really want. Versatility is really unmatched by any machine out there in the market today, and it really uh, provides no compromises. Uh, you really get the best of all worlds, whether it's cargo or passenger or comfort or uh, four seasons capability, off-road capability, mud protection, you know, all of those things are really covered uh, through our accessories and the machine itself. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer built for adventure.
I'm gonna start this test right off by saying what many of you are already thinking. It's about time. Can-Am has literally attacked all segments of the sport side-by-side -side marketplace, except for one, the 50 inch. For 2018 though, their lineup is finally complete with the introduction of the all new Maverick Trail and Trail DPS 50 inch wide sport side-by-side -side family of vehicles. And this vehicle is all new. It's not just a narrow Maverick. Can-Am's trail, similar to how Articat did things, has been built from the ground up to be a 50 inch side-by-side. Let's start off with a quick overview of the specs and then we'll talk about how it actually performs. Under the hood of our 1000 DPS model is Can-Am's super strong 976cc Rotax V-Twin that pumps out 75 horsepower. Power is transferred through Can-Am's QRST CVT transmission to a shiftable four-wheel drive drivetrain that has a Visco-Lock QE auto-locking front diff and a manually unlocking rear diff. The DPS model obviously has a single mode version of Can-Am's power steering system. Double A-arms up front produce 10 inches of travel. The rear suspension system that Can-Am calls the TTAT produces 10.5 inches of travel. Front and rear sway bars help reduce body roll and it all ends up producing 10 inches of ground clearance. Our DPS model comes standard with a set of 12 inch cast aluminum wheels that are wrapped in a set of 26 inch Carlisle ACT tires. The whole thing rides on a set of twin tube gas charge preload adjustable shocks. The vehicle we have here is sporting some additional Can-Am parts and accessories like the front bumper, roof, sound bar, rear rack extension, and a few other goodies. So that's what it is. But the most important question of all is of course, how does it work? When you get inside the trail, the first thing you're gonna appreciate is how much space there is for your right leg. The adjustable seat makes reaching the gas pedal easy for short folks, but us taller people won't feel cramped, at least not on the right, the left foot area is smaller. I won't say it's tight because there's decent room. The complaint I have here is with the position of the footrest on the left side. It's too flat and is not where your foot naturally wants to rest. This isn't a big deal, but it is something I noticed right away. The seats and seating position are excellent. The overall dimensions of the vehicle being kept to 50 inches means there's no excess shoulder space for big folks, and I did find my left shoulder rests against the door all the time, but I was never uncomfortable, even with a full-size dude riding beside me. Everything inside the driver compartment is well laid out and easy to get to. Storage in the dash on both the driver and passenger sides is a nice touch, and the shifter is exactly where you expect it to be. It also might be one of the smoothest side-by-side -side shifters I've ever used. Really nice doors operate smoothly and provide massive protection. The gauge is attached to the tilt steering column, and while definitely on the small side, it does read a lot of information. Rotax's 1000cc V-twin power plant has always been a torque monster, but in this small lightweight package, it feels even better down low. But it definitely was the mid-range that really impressed me most. This motor just keeps pulling and pulling. That QRST CVT transmission backshifts super fast and is tuned to make perfect use of this engine's strong bottom end and mid-range as well. The most impressive aspect of the Trail DPS for all of our test riders, myself included, is how well it handles. The single mode DPS system is tuned to absolute perfection and handling is quick, but also precise. This makes it very confidence inspiring to drive fast. Yes, it's narrow, but the quick and precise handling combined with the front and rear sway bars never leave you feeling out of control or like you're gonna tip over. Power sliding was effortless, even at high speeds. I've recently been informed that I'm starting to sound like a bit of a broken record when it comes to side-by-side -side suspensions. Unfortunately, I am gonna repeat myself one more time talking about the Maverick Trail. The 10 inches of front suspension travel is, quite honestly, amazing. It felt flush and soaked up pretty much anything I could throw at it. With preload set to full soft, the ride was as good as one could hope for. But out back, the ride is decidedly stiff. Things the front end soaked up without complaint would cause the rear end to buck way more than any of our testers thought was reasonable. Springs were again set to full soft and the ride was just not as compliant as I think it should be given how smooth the front end actually rides. Luckily, this is an easy fix, and an adjustable set of shocks will solve this problem entirely on, say, an XDS model in the future. This vehicle hasn't been on the ground for long, but we have been testing it pretty steady since the moment it landed. This testing has led all of us here at Dirt Tracks to one final conclusion. 
The Maverick Trail 1000 DPS looks sweet. It's aggressive and stylish. It's got great power, outstanding handling, decent ride quality, and is comfortable. The DPS is tuned perfectly and the clutching is unmatched in the industry. When you consider that this is Can-Am's first attempt at a 50-inch side-by-side, you can't come away anything but highly impressed, just like we are. The question on everybody's mind now is, of course, how does it stack up against the current 50-inch class leader, Polaris's Razor 900? It just so happens, we're going to answer that question very soon, so stay tuned. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation, Can-Am, the ride says it all. And by Textron Off-Road, driven by the bold. Thanks for watching this segment of Dirt Tracks TV. For more great content, make sure you click the links or subscribe to our channel where we're always updating with new content every day throughout the week.